Believe a man who loves cult classic horror films and food when he says that the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre house is well worth the stop. It is always surreal for me to think that an innocent looking farmhouse from the 1970s would turn into a place of so many nightmares and so many decent meals. But what led me here to this place of such depravity, of so much disgusting, cannibalistic, and frightening events? Furniture made out of human skin and bone. Skulls and animals dangling from the ceilings. And many lives lost inside what looked to be a picturesque and perfectly painted farmhouse on a sunny Texas day. To understand what led me here, we have to go back to the beginning. I was born a poor black child in Canyonlands, Utah. Better yet, let's do the Cliffs Notes. I grew up with the Halloween excursions of Mr. Myers, and certainly those Friday excursions of my namesake, Mr. Voorhees. No doubt I'm no stranger to horror, and I wasn't then when I was led to a certain movie that played on HBO on repeat. That movie was Summer School, starring Gibbs from NCIS. Two of the horror geeks in the film always refer to a movie that I had never seen called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They were obsessed with it, and I wanted to know why. So I hitched a ride on down to Blockbuster Video, yes I'm that old, and in my hands was the movie itself, certainly plugged into the VHS player. Yes, I'm that old. My cousin Pete and I laughed through at least the first half an hour of the film. The gritty filmography, strange acting, and annoying characters mixed with the boring storyline had us cracking jokes and chuckling the entire time not realizing that what seemed like boring storyline pays a very large part in the final section of the film. We cracked jokes and laughed our ever-loving heads off until something happened. Yeah, that. Needless to say, we weren't laughing anymore. Hence my introduction to the original Leatherface. The infamous one who rapidly leads us into a progression of tragedy that takes place between Sally Hardesty, her friends, and the cannibalistic family to which Leatherface belongs. Not only did this frightening event become my favorite horror movie, but it became one of my favorite movies of all time in general of any genre. Needless to say, on one of my excursions through Texas, I had to find out if the original house was still available. Turns out it certainly was, although not in its original location when the movie was filmed in 1973. It had been moved to Kingsland and, even better news, it was a bloody cafe. Imagine my excitement when I knew I could check out the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre house and get some grub. One of my biggest life regrets is that I was not deep into recording video when this 2016 oddity walk took place. Also, I wanted to go against the grain of taking photos of food that I always saw on social media without realizing that my grub haunt was going to take place eventually as well. But I will tell you the rooms and the dining tables that had a very distinct decay to them during the filming of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre certainly is not the same case today. The dining was successful, it was classy, and it was very clean, a beautiful place to have a decent hamburger, which I certainly did. The doorway where Leatherface slammed that silver metal door leads back into a kitchen area and upstairs where the grandfather stayed alive in his wheelchair. 
now resides a drinking hole. Sound guy, if you would, throw us a little bit of ambience to set the mood. I scooped up my friends, Marsha and Nick Malosi, for the several hours journey to where our lunch would take place. It was a place that had seen many lunches and many tragedies, according to a certain universe that, who are we to say, does or does not exist. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre House bore hamburgers the size of humans, a great portion of amazing flavor that served us very well. What the meat absolutely was, who can we tell? We wandered upstairs where the bar waited our arrival. A large man was ready to pour us drinks. He free poured amazing cocktails to wash down our meal while we observed pictures, memorabilia, and merchandise from the legendary movie that became a cult classic. I could not help but feel overjoyed, smiling, enjoying the place and being heavily distracted by the many beautiful devices that they had to pay homage to the film. Suddenly, I found myself accosted by the legend himself, Leatherface, before me, his blade from the chainsaw at my throat. Couple of things wrong with this picture. One, I'm not a toilet picture guy. I'm not a toilet humor guy at all, as a matter of fact, and when people take toilet pictures, it makes me wonder how often they've had piss in their blood, explosive diarrhea, and had to sleep it off with their face down in the same evacuation point due to a night of too much drinking. Bruh. Number two. Leatherface would never sport such a fashion statement. In fact, he always wore a suit and tie, especially when having strangers over for dinner, even if dinner was their friend. That goes to show you that even homicidal, cannibalistic, borderline retarded maniacs have their good points. And did I also mention that he is a dancer, boogieing it up along the bars and clubs all around the Lone Star State? Combine that with his aforementioned culinary skills, his ability to apply flawless makeup, and his hobbies of making the household a little more homey with the doodads and bones that he hangs around the home. Combining all this, one might call him a maverick, a jack of all trades, and you can tell just by looking at him. Are you single, ladies? The good news is, with some simple and accurate editing, we can get back on track to where we were going. Sound guy, cue that eerie ambiance music. Being accosted by the legendary Leatherface felt more like an honor than a threat. You can tell by the shit-eating grin on my face. Apparently, I survived the attack, but who is to say that in another timeline, it went the same way? Due to the very pleasant atmosphere, the fantastic drinks, and an amazing meal among friends. These are the things of which memories are made. I departed the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre house with a full belly, a major item checked off my bucket list, and this kick-ass shirt that no longer fits me. I highly advise you to check out the place for yourself, as this oddity made a huge impact in the history of film, pop culture, and horror. What is now known as the Grand Central Cafe can be found at 1010 King Court in Kingsland, Texas. Their hours vary, but as of the making of this production, they are open for business, and their meals are high on my recommendations list. Just tell them that you were sent by J. Bradstreet the oddity walker.